AOE 4 civs in 60 seconds. The Japanese. Welcome to everyone's favorite faction. Apparently, the Venn diagram of AOE 4 players and weebs is a f***ing circle. The Japanese just do everything better. They have better farms and a more unraidable base than the English, and even more brain-dead marine marauder ball than the Holy Roman Empire, and who needs those clunky-ass great bombards when you have the handheld version? The power of the great bombard in the palm of my hand. When they mine stone, they get gold. When they build a house, they get a mill. When they make horse archers, they get crossbows. And when they make infantry, they get the best light cavalry unit in the game. The Onab- They've even got ninjas that are so good at their job that I've yet to see one in a game. To win with this faction, just spam barracks, rally them in the general direction of the enemy base, and face roll like there's no tomorrow. While your opponents are screaming, you can peacefully sit back and enjoy placing your Yurashiros. Why the f does this faction get free relics? For everything else about the Japanese, you'll just have to- That's all from me. Stay frosty, stay chilly. AoE 4 civs in 60 seconds, the order of the dragon. The answer to the question, where did Dracula get his name from, is this obscure order, which serves as the Holy Roman Empire's variant. A faction of extremely elite, but sparingly few, super powerful gigachads, with units that are bigger, drippier, and expensivier than everyone else. This is the Ubermensch Civ. Of course they speak German. As the order, you're always going to be outnumbered, but fret not, each of your soldiers is literally worth two of the enemy. Your opponent will never know whether or not they can win a fight against you, and honestly, neither will you. Sounds enticing, right? HRE players finally got some juicy content for their favorite Civ? Wrong. This Civ plays nothing like HRE. Never go Aachen, always go Mindvor, fast castling sucks, do feudal aggression instead, and what's a barracks? Is that like a sh**ier archery range or something? This faction's ranged units are insane. Their hand cannoneers don't even fire bullets, they just press the enemy's delete key. If you are struggling with your cognitive load, this might just be your sin. For everything else about the Order of the Dragon, you'll just have to play them yourself. That's all from me, stay frosty, stay chill. AoE 4 civs in 60 seconds. Welcome to the Champion Spotlight for Jean d'Arc. It's just Jean d'Arc. This variant of the most annoying civilization in the game somehow manages to be even more cancerous. Jean starts out as a literal villager, but once she levels up, she can become a hunter or a woman at arms. Q is a spin to win, great for mass murdering spearmen and innocents alike. W is an AoE burst heal because the game really needed that. And E allows her to consecrate buildings, reducing their unit costs. This is super OP on siege workshops, by the way. After she's unalived enough things on the map, she'll level up, gaining a horse, along with 50% range damage reduction. Wait, for real? She also unlocks her R ability, which allows her to summon companions that will dent in anything that you were trying to counter her with. At this point, most people would have already surrendered by now, but this isn't even her final form. At level 4, Jean d'Arc gets a gun. Age of Empires 4, ladies and gentlemen. She also unlocks Anna's ultimate from Overwatch, or she can pull cannons out of her ass for free. In retrospect, I think the English might have been onto something with that stake. For everything else about Jean d'Arc, pick up a history book. Don't you dare play this broken sh**. That's all from me, stay frosty, stay chilly. AoE 4 civs in 60 seconds. Zhushi's Legacy, by far the worst named civ in the game. Sushi Legacy is listed as China's variant, but really this is just better China. Tang Dynasty allows you to fast castle by 6 minutes, Song Dynasty makes your farm transition buttery smooth, Yuan Dynasty makes your units a little bit cheaper, but who cares, and Ming Dynasty is something that happens to you on accident because you were trying to get both H4 landmarks. On paper, Zucchini Legacy has way more emphasis on their Imperial officials, but in reality, you're just here for their military. Palace guards are available in the feudal age, Juganu and Grenadiers are no longer gated behind dynasties, and you get access to Shaolin Monks in age 3. These infamous bald men will dent in fully armored knights, tank crossbow bolts to the face, and make other monks their bitch, all while carrying a relic on their back. What are they feeding these guys? Not only is getting to late game with Gucci Legacy a breeze thanks to this stupid landmark, but once you get there, a combination of the strongest cap in the game, crossbows with double shot, and mass grenadiers will have you telling your enemy to say my name. <laughs> For everything else about Juicy Legacy, you'll just have to play them yourself. That's all from me, stay frosty, stay chilly. AoE 4 civs in 60 seconds, the Byzantines. Byzantine, excessively complicated and difficult to understand. This is the hardest civ in the game, and you'll never feel like you're playing it to its full potential. This civ requires PhD to play, so if you don't have one, don't bother. To power up their economy, the Byzantines rely on a network of cisterns and aqueducts, and they have a special fifth resource called olive oil, which for some reason is used to purchase mercenaries. As a result, Byzantine armies tend to resemble those overly diverse friend groups you see in college brochures. Sounds good so far, but while you were busy figuring out how cisterns work, your opponents already hit Imperial and is sieging down your base. It's a good thing you have the Hippodrome. Oh, wait, that got nerfed to the ground. Hey, at least you have your cataphracts. That got nerfed too. What about Cairo Siphons? Wait, they're worse than regular rams? Ranking and guard? What do you mean they get one shot by archers? Am I missing something here? <sighs> Yes, the Byzantines may be the weakest civ in the game, but it's the hottest fires that forge the strongest steel, and whether you're winning or losing, the Byzantines will do it in style. And if you do get the dub, you know it's because you're actually just better. So go on, remind everyone why they're still thinking about the Roman Empire. For everything else about the Byzantines, you'll just have to figure them out yourself. That's all from me, stay frosty, stay chilly. 
AoE 4 sieves in 60 seconds. The Ayyubids. This is the dynasty of the Great Saladin. The Ayyubids are the Abbasids on Adderall. Instead of slow, boring text from four different House of Wisdom wings, the Ayyubids have eight wings that each give you a ton of tempo. Econ wing, free vills and better berries, or free wood, not that kind. Military wing, free camel dudes, or free blacksmith upgrades. <laughs> Culture Wing, free dervishes or a ridiculously fast castle, nerf the shit please. And finally, Trade Wing, a convoluted ass way to get more unit health or the great Ayubid Casino, baby. Hey! Just kidding, what a terrible mechanic to add to this game. Units wise, the Ayubids have camel lancers instead of lancers, camel dervishes instead of imams, and desert raiders, which are just camel riders and camel archers fused together. But really, you're just gonna be spamming gulams. When all else fails, lay waste your opponents with fire spewing manganiques or the motherfucking. For everything else about the Ayubids, you'll just have to play them yourself. That's all from me, stay frosty, stay chilly.